you know, idea to sell the company come in? I mean, did somebody come to you knocking on your door? Did you actively say, hey, let's sell. I'm tired of it or let's sell. We I, was, I, was the, I was the driver. I was the driver of exiting and it kind of happened pre it, we started to exit pre COVID and we started to get into conversations with Would you call that lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lucky. I'm good, man. You know what I mean? No, I, I, um, I, through the process of scaling the business, you know, when we got to our, when we got to our seventh location, my brother and I had kind of decided that to get to the next level, it was either going to require us to go nationwide or it was going to require us to franchise. And um, so neither one of us really wanted to be in the franchising business. I had talked to enough people that were in the franchising business to know that like, you know, your first 30 units aren't very profitable. So you got to get, you got to get to, you know, 30 plus franchised units before you really start making anything. And I, I had kind of felt like I had, I had, <clears throat> I had gotten on this escape draft off of the law that turned into a bigger thing than I'd ever anticipated it to be. But I was so far off from what I wanted to do on a daily basis in terms of operating these, these businesses and dealing with the employees that you have to deal with when you're managing a retail type business. I decided that I didn't want to get to the next stage of growth. And I wanted to get out of the business before the profit and loss statement started to demonstrate that I was as checked out of the business as I was. And um, so I kind of felt like the writing was on the wall. Um, and I had Did your brother had, agree with that or. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, 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 he, he was coming up back then he was coming up on 40, you know, he's 37, 38 years old at the time. And I think he had gotten to the point where he was like, I don't want to be in the kid party business when I'm 40 years old. You know, <laughs> and that was like a, a breaking point for him. And and so I started going through, I, I met with some investment bankers, I met with some business brokers, I met with a lot of the competitors that were in the industry, both in the trampoline park and the escape room business. And the reason why it took nine exits was because as I started to kind of figure out the best way to get this thing structured to sell it, I realized that we had we had overgrown, we had, we had a trampoline park business wanted to buy the trampoline parks, but not the escape rooms and all these other pieces. Um, and then the escape room people wanted to be in the escape room business, but they didn't want to be in all of these pieces. So we had what we had originally started to build, thinking that we were kind of becoming this conglomerate type business that we could, you know, have all these other different concepts under one roof. We found that we had kind of overgrown our acquirer pool, that there was no real one acquirer that was like a perfect match. And so we started to kind of um, segment down and disintegrate the business a little bit. And so we, we ended up selling off the majority of the business, low, either by location or by concept, to um, just to fit the buyers that we needed to fit in order to to make those sales happen on a case by case basis. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you weren't going to get the uh, uh, multiple from a larger buyer because he didn't want half. I didn't want the ax throwing yeah. business, or I didn't want the yeah, trampoline. They, business. He didn't want to be in, you know, their private equity backed and they didn't want to be in the real estate business. Like we were in the real estate business in some of the locations. And so I went through, I talked to bankers, broker. I, I basically decided that the only way to do it that could make sense for me was, and, and the way to get highest and best value on all this stuff was to just go, Asset by asset. Some of them, we, you know, the escape room business, we sold a portion of it to a haunted house buyer. He bought two locations. We kept the franchising and the, and the branding rights. We just, we just went deal by deal. Me basically going deal by deal. And like, is this, is this asset going to make sense as a location, as a park where they own three of them or, you know, and so it, it ended up being the type of deal that really, most entrepreneurs wouldn't have, would have had a difficult time doing, which is why, you know, I, from a content perspective. Yeah. I, I don't think people that. see that though. You know, they're not seeing that. It goes, Oh man, I got to break this up to sell it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, that, that became the only thing that made sense for me to get the numbers that I wanted to get and, um, and not take a massive discount. And it just, it took time, but we were happy to take the time to make it happen in a way that, you know, made us the most money. Yeah. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you're a subscriber by clicking on this button right here down below. And if you want to watch more Serial Acquire interviews, click on this button right here. If you're ready to buy your first business, 
Get my course at dealflowsystem.net right here. Take care. Cheers, John.